Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Volunteer Fest 2020. In true 2020 fashion, we can't be together uh, live, but we are so grateful that you are here and you are watching and that we do have this technology where we can still hear about the, the needs in our community and the needs that uh, these organizations have. So my name is Brad Creighton. I am from Volunteer Fox Cities. I'm responsible for community engagement and events, and we're just glad you're here. Uh, a couple things to take note of before I turn it over. All these sessions are being recorded, so people can watch them later at their own convenience or rewatch if they're watching live. Uh, if you are not comfortable being on uh, the camera, that's fine. It's set up for speaker view. So it will only record the people talking. If you don't want to be uh, recorded, just leave yourself on mute. And then if you have a question, go ahead and type that in the chat box and we'll make sure that your questions get answered. Uh, second, I also want to remind you to check the Volunteer Fest one-stop shop at volunteerfoxcities.org slash holiday, uh, oh boy. <laughs> volunteerfoxcities.org slash volunteer fest. You'll, have, you'll see all the information we talk about uh, tonight with Outagamie County Volunteer Services, as well as the rest of the participating agencies. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna stop talking uh, for right now, and I am grateful and happy to introduce Penny Jane from Outagamie County Volunteer Services. Thanks, Brad. Um, I, like Brad said, I'm with Outagamie County Volunteer Services. I coordinate volunteers for several different programs. Um, tonight I'd like to highlight on three of the programs that I do. Um, one is guardianship. And mind you, if I'm looking to the left, it's because I'm looking at my other computer screen um, to get some stats. Um, right now we have volunteer guardians that we are in need of. We currently have um, 17 matches right now. And what those matches are is if somebody is living in their home or in an institution, but they've been court ordered or deemed incompetent, they do need somebody to help them with their finances, sometimes um, also with their life decisions, healthcare, things like that. Every case is different. Um, the referrals come from social workers within human services. So there's always somebody there to chat with before you actually commit to a case. Um, so we talk about it. Sometimes you even get to meet the person to see if it would be a good fit for you before we do go through the process and make you a legal guardian through the courts. Um, background checks, references, as well as credit check are needed for that program. Um, and like I said, sometimes it's guardian a person where that means it's making the health decisions as well as like living arrangements, things like that, or guardian of a state, which is just strictly their finances. Um, some of our clients have elderly parents. They're really not able to keep up with their children and especially with the finances, it becomes a lot for them as they grow older themselves. So every case is a little different, it, whether they are guardian a person, a state or both. It's also different as far as how much time is um, spent on a case. We do ask that at least once a quarter, you do see the client or in this case, what we call a ward. Um, so you see that, that person face to face. Of course, with COVID, um, that might not be possible, but we do um, try to do everything as virtual as possible, at least keeping in touch with staff at nursing homes or group homes, things like that. So that's our volunteer legal guardianship program. Another program would be my volunteer driver program. The transportation program is one of my biggest programs that I do with the county. We transport kids and adults of all ages to most of them are to visits with um, their parents or children. So children are placed protectively in foster care or relative placements but they're court ordered to visit with their parents, their biological parents. So we provide either transportation from the, for the parents or the child to the meeting point so they can have that visit. Um, 
just a few stats, which I just, I'm always amazed at my transportation. Um, last year in 2019, we had 16 drivers that put in a total of 2,046 hours doing 755 rides and get this a total of 69,485 miles. That's a lot of miles, that's a lot of hours, um, a lot of clients that are receiving our service. And why is that so valuable is all those hours spent behind the wheel transporting frees up a social worker to actually do other case management um, tasks that they're required to do. Whether it's meeting with other clients, doing court papers, attending court, um, whatever other tasks that they have to do. Driving sometimes is not the best utilized their time, so we try to get volunteers in as often as possible. We do reimburse our volunteers at the federal rate. Right now, I believe it's 0.57 mile per mile. Um, we, let me just back up. You don't take a ride unless you um, approved it. In other words, you will know exactly what you're accepting. So I'll put out a list via email to all the drivers and say, these are the rides that we have pending that I need a driver for. And it'll be like Saturday, July 20th, little shoot to Appleton, 8 a.m. to 9 o'clock is a visit. So you know that at some point you got to get the child or the passenger by to the appointment by 8 o'clock and then at 9 o'clock return. So it's very understandable before you take the assignment as far as what you're going to be doing. A lot of our visits are local while we do have some out of town, um, but you're not required to take the long distance. We have drivers who like the long distance. We have some drivers who only like the short distance ones. So it's, it's really up to the volunteer to pick and choose what they would like to be assigned to. Um, Right now we have a deer hunter. Obviously he's not working for us next week, so he's off. So it's perfectly fine, um, again, to pick your schedule based on activities. We understand you get, you have your own personal life that we want to make sure that you find that perfect blend of your personal life with your volunteer life. Then we talked about those visits. So at those visits, social workers, generally supervise the visits, making sure that the visit is going well, meaning that it's a safe environment, the children feel safe, the parents feel safe, um, nothing derogatory is being said by either party, um, and just making sure that the case is going in the right direction, because our ultimate goal is to have the children go back home and be re reunified with their parents. That's our number one goal in all our cases. So by doing the visits, we're encouraging proper parenting skills. I'm discouraging any negative skills, such as um, if they're sitting on their phone while their child is there. Well, the social worker would just say, you know what, why don't you put your phone away, focus on the child right now. You only have an hour or two to visit. Let's, let's make the best of it. So most cases we have the volunteer or the social workers, but in a lot of cases that are close, where the cases are, the kids are going to be close to going home. The very nice cases, I shouldn't say nice, very um, simplified cases where there's not a lot of complex complexity to them, we do put volunteers into the situations and into the visits. So you would sit with them um, and just. For the most part, you supervise. You don't interact unless you're encouraging some better behavior, some changes. We're not there to impress our parenting skills. We are just there to um, provide that safe environment to make sure the visit is the best possible for both parent and child. Um, so we have some volunteers who do transportation to and from the visits and then stay for the visits as well. A lot of our drivers just like to do the drive, but then we have some supervised visit volunteers who only like to do the visits. So it's, it's you can blend it or you can separate them out if you want. Um, we never put you into a supervised visit without having prior met the family with the social worker and you're brought up to speed on 
the case management on it, what to expect in a visit, what you need to encourage, what to discourage. Also, you are told um, who can be with the visit, who shouldn't be with the visit. So we just need that person to guide those visits along, making sure that nobody's at the visit that shouldn't be, because again, we are encouraging the parental and child interaction. And sometimes you bring another person in there and the, now the parent will focus on the other person rather than the child. So those are the three programs I am looking for volunteers for right now. Um, all three programs are very much needed um, for many positions. Um, I think we could at least use another four supervised visit volunteers, three or four um, drivers. Especially in the winter, we do have some snowbirds that go away. And, but then again, we have some golfers in the summer that will balance out the snowbirds in the winter. So um, again, you get to pick your schedule. And with the supervised visit, with the supervised visit schedule, you generally do the same visit week after week. So like you would pick Wednesday 4 to 5 or Wednesday 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. So you know your schedule ahead of time, you consistency with that. And some of our drives are consistent like that as well. Wondering, I, I got a couple of questions that kind of uh, came up that I was wondering about. Um, for the, the guardianship, uh, once you're matched uh, with someone, how long do you stay matched with that person? Um, it's a long process. It's a long-term commitment that we ask. Um, once you're court um, approved to be a guardian, you are actually matched with that person until we can find a successor guardian to take over. Sometimes okay. it's quick that we can find that, and sometimes it would be several months down the road. Um, unfortunately, okay. a lot of the clients we serve are elderly, so they will pass before we the guardian wants to give it up. And then as, as the guardian, if, um, if there's a situation where, where for some reason you were called to, to court or something like that, um, are you there to help support that guardian in that situation? Or how does that work out? Or does that never happen, I guess? Yep, you are the advocate for that, guard, for that ward, yes. You, um, we have, perfect example, we had some, a, resident, a client had moved from one home to another home recently and there was $40 missing out of her account and the guardian was fantastic and advocated and really made sure she found that $40 for the client. You, you're that voice, you're that person. Yeah. Um, yeah. We all need that person in our life and some people don't have that. And if you have the ability to manage some of these finances and just uh, help them along the way and become their friend whether you see them frequently or not. It's mm -hmm. so important. For sure. Yeah, and, and I imagine there's there's some good relationship building there, right? You it know, really is. Sure, you're a court appointed uh, guardian, but yeah, you, you're gonna get to, you have to get to know the person to to make those decisions and help them make those decisions, so. We've got some matches that have been going on for 20 some years. Wow. And some, they get to know the family, you know. It, it all depends on the case. And sure. And the clients and the volunteers, what direction they want to push it in. Sure. Is, um, is there something, what, what's the process or, or what do you do if, if, um, if something's just, if, if the match isn't working? I know it's court appointed, so there's probably a, a big process there. But, you know, let's say that, that the match just isn't, it just doesn't work for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. In a dire situation where the guardian needs to step down, there are cases that we can then um, hire a corporate guardian. Actually, the client would have to, some of the funds might have to come out of their account and pay a professional to take over. And that's where a lot of the cases are currently is with corporate, but the finances aren't there. So mm -hmm. by having a volunteer, it frees up some money for them. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. Then uh, for the for the driver, if I just want to drive and I'm not necessarily interested in being the, the supervisor as well, um, once I drive the, the parent or the child to the meeting, um, do I have to stay for the length of the session or can I come back then to do the pickup, go do something else and then come back to do the pickup? 
Great question. Yep, you, you're free to go during that time. Some visits are an hour, some are a couple hours, some are overnight. Mm -hmm. Some are only one way. But in between, okay. yes, you're free to you know do some shopping, go home, and it all depends on the location, of course. And that's something I would know on that email that you send out, right? That so here they need to go here. The meeting is overnight, so they don't need to be picked up till this time right. or whatever. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then the the supervision one. What? Um, so let's say I'm a supervisor. What is the the support system in place in case something out of the ordinary happens during the visit? <coughs> Excuse me. No, no problem. There's always a social worker on call. All these cases are through our child protection program, our Ch children, youth, and family division. They are, um, they always have somebody on call. Also to the worker on the case that you would actually meet with to introduce you to the family. They, they generally share their number so you can call them after hours. Um, in a lot of cases, there's also a home consultant to reach on the case. So there's multiple county workers involved, should you have any question. And the workers are usually pretty good at screening. If there's gonna be some odd situations, of course they can't predict the future. Right. But if they really foresee anything odd that might be questionable, that might not be a case that they put to a volunteer. Perfect. Yeah, so I, you know, I just wanted to emphasize that, yeah, you're not gonna be left alone on an island. You definitely have, um, the social workers in there behind you. So it's not yeah. going to be like, okay, go and do, and you know, you'll be, you'll be trained and you'll have that person there. That's that, that can help you out uh, in a pinch if something weird or strange happened uh, right. in one of those meetings. Um, you should probably mentioned to the visits right now um, with it being cold, we were trying to meet mostly at parks with the COVID. Um, but sometimes we're meeting in homes. We are meeting in libraries. Few of them are meeting actually at the county building, not as many um, as we're trying to limit the activity there as well. But no matter what, you would be provided with the proper PPE to make sure you're safe and following the CDC guidelines. Before every visit, we have a questionnaire that are asked of all involved with that visit, um, just to screen them and make sure they are healthy and have not been exposed. So we're trying to provide the safest environment for all to make sure that connection between parent and child is met. And what is, um, what's your age requirement? Is it 18, 21? What, what's the requirement? Well, you have to be um, an adult. So we've had social work students that have actually come from the colleges to do service hours. Um, on a few occasions, we've had interns. Interns would have to go through HR and, things like that to come to me. But um, we've had 19, 20 year olds who are going to school that have a passion to want to help and qualified. We just really try to make sure we're fully trained and they're, they're aware of the situations that could happen. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, could you tell us one more time, what is, uh, what's the best next steps or uh, if someone was interested or wanted to learn more, what would be the best way to reach out and do that? The best way would probably be email and that's pennyjane.strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S-S at outagamey.org. And um, yep, so email me. I work part-time, but I'm on and off the computer all day long because I like to make sure I stay on top of the emails and I can shoot you some um, brochures, some other information, answer any questions you might have. Excellent. And uh, all that, Penny Jane's email and all the other information that she went over today is also in the one-stop shop. So if you want to uh, see that or missed some of that information, make sure you stop at that one-stop shop to uh, be able to download all that and have that handy. Uh, anything else you, you'd like to share with us, Penny Jane? We'd love to have you join our team and make a difference with the kids and um, the adults in our, in our county services and help those social workers out there way overworked. They, they deserve a break every now and then. <laughs> they do a fantastic <laughs> job and, and they just appreciate the volunteers greatly. 
We just can't tell well, you how much the volunteers are appreciated through our agency. Well, we are uh, we are appreciative of you and uh, the work that you guys do because I know that it is definitely not always an easy job to do. Um, but uh, you guys do a wonderful job, and and I know. Um, you, you train and support your volunteers so well and, and the volunteers that I've talked to that have had experience with you um, just, you know, can't say enough about their experience that it's been a, a good meaningful experience. Uh, so if you've heard something that sounds interesting to you and, or and would like more information or would like to go ahead and sign up to be a, a driver or a guardian uh, or a, a visit supervisor, do not hesitate to reach out to Penny Jane. She would absolutely love to hear from you.